the hurricane is crazy. It's crazy. You know, I find it funny and the irony in it on a political level that, you know, Trump has been talking about there's no global warming and then all of a sudden like four severe hurricanes come through back to back. Right. And then one of them is supposed to smash up one of his spots, which is crazy. mar a lago in yeah, Florida. Mar-a-Lago's. It just seemed very karmic or, or like maybe someone's looking up there like, let me just show y'all a little something. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. But I do know this, if, you know, I think I'm like, damn, if I hear there's going to be a hurricane in LA right now, and like it might be something where you have to evacuate, right. I'm going to stock up on gas and food. I didn't like the way in Florida how all the prices went up when people had to leave. It's like, yeah. if you don't have money, you got to stay. Yeah. And there's not enough gas. It's just like in Houston, they went up on like, they were selling like bottles of water for, for like, like $40, $40 or something. Or something That's like foul. That for a pack. That's foul. Yeah. Cause that means if you ain't got it, what's, what's that do to people that are like, if I ain't got it, I'm gonna get it regardless. And that's water. That's when people get savage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I asked for it, or you know, and you raise the prices, now I gotta take it from you. Especially to eat. something like water and food. Like, and that, in those food. times. Yeah. Yeah. But I definitely know I would either pack up and be up out. I think, you know, because, you know, you know it's gonna be too crowded on the, on the, on the, on the, on the freeway. And yeah. you know, there ain't gonna be no gas on the freeway because everybody got it. Yeah. So you gotta stack that shit up, you know? But it does seem like you can't really avoid the natural stuff, the uncontrollable stuff. Yeah. You know, and, and that's why I guess your karma gotta be right, because that's the only thing that really controls energy, is what you do is what you get back. Right, exactly. The yeah. law of cause and effect. Yeah. It's always an effect. But I do hope everyone's all right. I know it just tore down, um, like, St. Martin. Yeah, I saw that. Tore that down. Did yeah, a little work on, on um, Puerto Rico. Yeah. You know, and that's crazy. I don't think that's bad yet, but I, I saw. It tore Richard Branson's island. Yeah. Tore his island up. He had to go in the wine cellar. And sleep with the staff. You know, it's very humbling. Wow. These uh, wow. it don't really matter how much money you got when nature comes. It also through, shows like, yeah. you how delicate life is. You yeah. know, in comparison to nature, like in the face of nature, like yeah. you know, bad yeah. earthquakes, uh, you know, tsunamis, and all this different stuff. I gotta send an R.I.P. to my man Fat Mac from Forty Second. Man, he just, you know, he just came home and playing ball, and just, you know, I was talking to him one day on the Facetime with Cam, and next day he was gone. Uh, and I lost another friend yesterday too, man. But you know, I can't really speak on yeah. it because I don't know too much about it. But also, it's crazy. Yeah, rest in peace to my aunt Carolyn. Yeah. She's saying, you know, that's my dad's sister. Her name's Carolyn? That's yeah, my mother's Carolyn. name. Yeah. She had uh, you know what I'm saying? She was actually the one that uh checked me when I was about thirteen. I had a situation with my grandmother. My mother, she had left us with my grandmother in North Carolina. And she uh my grandmother was going school shopping for us, but she didn't have enough money. And so she was going to like Goodwill, doing whatever she could to, you know, put clothes on us. My sister was cool with it, cause you know, you can get a girl fresh at a Goodwill. Yeah. And uh, I told her just give me the money, but there was really no money to give. And on top of that, she was, um, you know, she just was, you know, borrowing the money to take care of us at the time, cause my mother wasn't in the position to take care of us. And my aunt heard about it and she checked me on it and she was saying, you know, really, you know, when someone does something for you, there's a form of gratitude that needs to be there mm. in the face of this adversity that's going on by your mom not being there. Mm. But she, but really what it taught me, because she told me that, you know, I just need to, if I want something to work for, to put forth the effort to get what I want. And so in turn, I started working with her husband doing construction when I was 13 years old. I hated it, mm. but, but yeah. that was the spark that started me right. on being my a whole real thing with independence, being a man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Instead of asking my grandmother and relying on her for it because she didn't have an income. Right. And so, you know, I just want to say rest in peace to her. She was the one that put that spark out there for me, nice. you know. Yeah. And it was like funny because when she died, it came to me. But before that, I didn't think about it. I was, you know, I just was moving how I was moving. But, you know, it's interesting how certain family members in certain situations can make you step up to the plate yeah. and really, you know. Or just awareness. Shape you. They give you awareness. Once you know something, it's hard. Once once you know something, then you become heavily responsible. Exactly. Because you know, like, if she hadn't told you, then you probably would be all right not yeah. knowing. You have to learn a different way. Yeah. But once you know when you don't do it, that's not, it's not logic. Exactly. What's happening? This is the big homie Kenyatta. Make sure you like comment and subscribe to our YouTube page. And if you haven't already, hit the notification so you can get an alert each and every time our hip hop motivation videos come up. And also, thank you for your support. Peace and blessings.
In life, everyone's dealt different cards. And I was dealt a diabetes card. I'm a type one diabetic. My sister's godfather's diabetic. He developed type two diabetes. When I was younger, I really didn't know anybody else that had diabetes. You know, not many people talk about it when they have it. They look at it as a weakness, where I look at it as a strength. People with diabetes feel the sense of shame or depression. I never felt that. I never felt that. I, I feel like a diabetic. That card got right. dealt, you deal Boom. with it. Wow. This was like ghetto gourmet right here. <laughs> You're telling me this isn't gonna affect my sugar or nothing. And taste I, this good. No, I don't think it's gonna affect your sugar at all. You know any diabetes? It runs in my family. Really? Yeah. By 2030, there's gonna be a third of the population is gonna be diabetic. Me as a diabetic, getting with a person that's not diabetic, it's like basically giving them the disease with you. Diabetes is not a weakness, it's a place to showcase your strength. It shows that you could do everything that everybody else could do plus that. You just became yeah, a diabetic? Yeah, just got type one three years ago. If you wanna learn more about being a diabetic and being cool while you're diabetic and the lifestyle of a diabetic, check out the Dash Diabetes Network. Listen, for mad years, I walked around with my neck looking like a Nestle Crunch Bar. I had to do something about it. What I found is that a razor bump is nothing but an ingrown hair that curls into the skin and causes the skin to become enlarged or inflamed, making it look like a bump. But it's not a pimple. It's a hair that grows into the skin causing inflammation. You have to remove that hair and then you have to use yourself a nice skin astringent, something that can do the trick, something that can get rid of those razor bumps. So what did I create? Bump Assassin, organic skin astringent. To order your own bottle of Bump Assassin, go to hiphopmotivation.bigcartel.com. When are you writing a book, Dave? I'm writing. I also have a book. You know, I have a um, <laughs> book called Culture Vultures. Yeah, what's it called? It's mm -hmm. called Culture Vultures. I did. If you, have you ever looked at the hip hop motivations that I do? Yeah, like, absolutely. The, so, yeah. me and um, Kenyana did a book, and I've already, it's already written. He wrote it. We we done with it, and I'm also giving it out in different ways. So it's gonna be an auditory experience as well. It's a series. The fashion game. Culture Vultures, the book. Okay. In business, Dame is a guy that's worn many hats. Yo, you can either think of a master plan or get mastered by somebody else's plan. Check it. As a barber, one of the most important life lessons I learned is to never do anything without seeing the ending result first. Before I understood the value of seeing results, I used to waste a lot of time sometimes doing double work because I didn't have a vision of where I was going. Then I started taking consultations more serious by not even turning on my clippers until I had a clear understanding of the result my client was planning to see. And in turn, it became easier to achieve the style they wanted to see in half the time. Real talk, the most successful barbers and beauticians are the ones that see the ending results before they start any service. Write, Write this, this down. Write this before down. making any moves, know where you're going. Deciding from thoughts of being sick and tired of something, starting something, or admiring something can be the emotions that fuel change. Because write this down. Emotion leads to passion, passion leads to action, and action leads to results. Word up. Question, what's the number one killer of dreams? If you said fear, you're wrong. Fear is on the list, but it's not the number one killer. The number one killer of dreams is comfort. The comfort of a good paying job or in an active relationship can seduce us for many years into the rhythm of accepting things without making any moves to change. Further numbing us into a state of zombie-like passiveness. Write this down. Passiveness will cause your dreams to pass you by.
right now. Yeah. Always in my groove. Yeah. <laughs> Daydreaming. I was started thinking about something. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm a musician. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like to spend all kinds of money. Like the dollar, the euro, like the pound, like the franc pause, like the yen. 